welcome to Crime Divers. I'm Laura. And I'm Jill. And today is a bonus episode. Yes, it is. It's, well, it's a Laura Sword bonus episode. It is actually, isn't it? A Laura Sword bonus episode today. Yeah, we thought, well, Laura's been moaning at me for the past couple of years that she didn't get to do a Halloween episode. But, so she decided to do a Halloween episode, didn't you? But it's not necessarily a scary Halloween episode. No, it's not. Cause, but frustratingly, last year, my crime actually <laughs> happened on Halloween. But yet we didn't play it till early November. But yeah, it's it's uh, but it's Halloween today. Yes. I'm giving you the platform. I know, but then I decided it wasn't gonna be like a Halloween related right. episode. Okay, so I know what Laura's episode is, right? So it's Halloween and Laura decides to do Disney. Yes. <laughs> I've got Disney on the brain. I'm i I'm still I'm still not over my holiday yet. Is that is that why you decided to do Disney? Because maybe, maybe this will make me over my holiday. Because then I'll be like, because uh, for anybody that doesn't know the title, because obviously you don't know because you've not asked, uh, it's Halloween special. Yeah, I know, but it has a title. Why? Because we don't we usually to call it a title. Right? I've called it a title, so we don't usually. Well, it's called the darker side of Disney. Oh, imagine it. So this is for me to get over my holiday. So does this mean you're never going to want to go back again? Nah. <laughs> you're just having a bit of closure for yeah. the next three months till you go back. Exactly. So also we're in the USA. If you didn't know that already. Well, we might have been in Paris. <laughs> no, but in the USA. Is there any other ones? Oh, there's one in... Is there not one in Japan? Yeah, and there's one in California. That's still the USA. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but to be fair, my stories are relevant to the <laughs> Florida Resort, so Disney World, mm-hmm. and there's a few instances of Disneyland, California. Right, so give us a bit of a clue. What is... I mean, yeah, we know it's about Disney. So what are you going to be telling us? What does it? What yeah, is, cause, is it going to involve? Yeah, because obviously this is not one big story because you know Disney is the happiest place on earth. It's not that easy to find things that aren't happy about Disney. Believe me. <laughs> um, so I've got some. I've got. I start off with a little ghost encounter. Oh, Halloween ghost. Ghost. Yeah. Um, there's also a couple of sad deaths. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of conspiracy theories as well. Ooh, so, I like a conspiracy theory. Yeah, so what's the one of my? I do have a photo that I want you to look at to see what right. you think. Okay. So it is a bit mm, mishmash all over the place, but as I say, Disney is the happiest place on earth, so it's very <laughs> difficult to find things that are not happy about Disney. Okay. So technically, it's not really a Halloween scary episode. It's just a bonus episode because it's Halloween. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. And that's. I, I love Disney. Yep. Well, that's good enough for me. So do you want to dive in? Let's dive in. So, as you know, <laughs> I've just said I love going to Florida and I love going to Disney World. Now, I've how many times have you been? Eight times. Does that include the time with me? Yes, I've been two times with you. No, you haven't. One time with you. <laughs> <laughs> twice. I, you went. Twi- you went once with me, and then you went with mom and dad the next time. Yeah. So I've been twice as a kid. Yeah. And six times as an adult. Right. Basically. Yeah. So. I was just saying, now you're probably thinking, okay, but you know, this is the True Crime podcast, so why am I about to do an episode on Disney? And as as I said before, as much as it is classed as one of the most magical places on earth, there have been some dark moments in its 50 year history, because it is 50 years celebrating this year. Oh, is it? Didn't know that. Yes, yes. yes, I went on the 50 years celebration. Ah, so was there, did they do special stuff when you were there? Um. Not that I saw, they just sold a lot of uh, 50 year merchandise. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so I, I bought like a 50 year pin, because I like collect the pins and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and there was like all the t shirts, bags. Oh, so just just a way, another way for them to make more money. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm going to take you through some of the not so magical incidents at Disney. Um, obviously, if you don't want to hear anything not so nice about Disney, then, you know, totally understand. <laughs> You can switch off. It is a bonus episode. We'll catch you tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be back <laughs> tomorrow. So, so you know, I won't be offended. But, you know, if you are interested to hear, you know, maybe... Right, I am. I mean, like, yes, we are a true crime podcast. But, mm. you know, it's nice just for a bonus, just to have a little something a little bit different, which Disney is very different to what we usually do. Well, exactly. Even if there is bad things that happen there, you know, it's still different, isn't it? Exactly. So, <clears throat> cool. Right. So first, I'd like to tell you about an urban legend. Mm-hmm. And the urban legend is about a man named George, or some people call him George the Welder. George the Welder? Welder, yes. Like welding, you know. Well, yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't know if you said welder or welder. 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 Yes, George the Welder. The one that wears the mask. Yes, like a welder. And goes, Doo! Yeah, I think that's a welder, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'm going to tell you about George. 
So there are a few variations, um, but the basics of it are that George, he was a construction worker hired to help build the attraction Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. So if anyone that doesn't know or hasn't been to Disney, Pirates of the Caribbean is in the Magic Kingdom theme park. I haven't. Because obviously there there's only one theme park in, in Disney World, so um, it's made up of um, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. So So is the Pirates of the Caribbean a pirate ship? It is, yes, it's a pirate ship, right. It was, um, <clears throat> I don't know if it was actually when it first opened, it obviously wasn't based on Pirates of the Caribbean in the films, because it was made was before it? that, but they incorporated the pirates. So is it just a pirate, because I know when you go to theme parks, they always have pirate ships, so is it just like a, yeah, it's like, a it's pirate a, Basically it's a water ride, so, so you're on a right, boat and, okay. and you go around. So, but obviously when the major franchise of Pirates of the Caribbean came out, they incorporated that into right. the actual ride, and like you like, you know, Johnny Depp's character, Jack Sparrow, and he's yeah. him and stuff like that now. Um, yeah, so basically, he was um, helping to build that attraction. So during construction, again, this is where we're not 100% sure, but, sure, but George either fell off or he was crushed by a piece of set, in, a piece of the set, sorry. Um, they possibly think it was a fallen beam, which killed him instantly. Oh, God. Um, so some, again, some variations of the myth say that the tall windowed tower, so basically... It's hard to explain, but it is a boat ride, and basically you're seeing sort of scenes as you go around on this boat ride. So mm-hmm. there's obviously like you know pirates drinking and yeah. towers, and you know just sort of that sort of stuff. So basically, there, there's a tall windowed tower that can be seen during the well well dunking stroke burning city scene, and they reckon that that's the piece of set that killed George. And some cast members now reportedly refer to this as George's tower. And it allegedly contains his initials carved into the base, and supposedly all attempts to remove the initials have failed, <laughs> and they always reappear, even if they've been painted over. Oh wow! His initials always <laughs> seem to reappear back through. But they shouldn't be trying to get rid of them. They should keep them there because, well, exactly. well if he died, well, why not? Well, no, exactly. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um. So shortly after the ride opened, a sad-looking older woman would often like visit the ride, um, and she'd always ask to ride alone. And cast members said that they would see her talking to nobody and see her sobbing. And that turned oh. out to be George's mum. Oh, so, I, I was thinking wife, but okay, mum. No, it turned out to be George's mum. She'd obviously want oh. to ride alone and just, you know, talk to him in some way. Oh, so that's like kind of quite sweet and quite sad at the same time. I know. So, of course, George, he's sent to now, sent, sent, he's said to now haunt the ride. Right, okay. Which, personally, I've never experienced it i mean obviously i've been on it a, a is it a good day. ride yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as a childish <laughs> that is so childish <laughs> was <laughs> what else would i say is it a good, <laughs> I was gonna say that enjoyable ride. Was, it a, was it a good attra- is that a good attraction um i think to be honest like now it's one of the most it's like a nostalgic ride. Maybe it's not the most exciting ride in the world. Right. Um, it's more just a like. There's no, there's no real thrill to it. I mean, I remember at the start, you know, you obviously you go on your boat and you kind of go down a little dip, and then it's you're just sort of going round nicely on it. Um, so it's <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm still laughing at being yeah. so childish. I know. So yeah, so I mean, it's all right. I mean, it's not one of the best ones, but you know, people still want to do it. Um. So yeah, so apparently George has said sent said, <laughs> Why are you still thinking about your enjoyable ride? <laughs> That's not what stop it, because this is terrible. So George is said to now haunt the ride. He is said to be mischievous. Mm-hmm. So he's not like scary, but he's right. mischievous. And the most famous part of the myth is that cast members have to wish him a good morning at the start of the day and a good oh. night at the end of the day. And if they don't, he will make life tough for them by causing the ride to break down. That so, sounds familiar, actually. I think I've heard so that. If anybody's ever on the Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> ride and it breaks down on you, it might well be George that's oh. causing it. Maybe, maybe you need to ask the cast members, have they said good morning to George? That sounds familiar. I don't, mm. know, don't know where I've seen that. Um, apparently, he also has a thing for the ladies. Like and it. reports of women feeling a tap on their shoulders or their bra straps being pulled as well. <laughs> <laughs> he is mischievous. Yes. <laughs> So there you go. So that's the story of George. All right, okay. So he's not a bad ghost. Yeah, well, that's good. But let's see, if you do 
have any breakdowns on that particular ride. It could be George. That's, Just this wasn't George. Yeah. <laughs> Get it fixed. I wish I had known. Although I didn't actually go on that ride the last time. That was when I was there a few weeks ago. We didn't do that one. All right. Anyway, so on to the next one. <clears throat> so this one's not so good. So on the fourteenth of um, June, which was a Tuesday, two thousand sixteen, a two-year-old boy, Lane Graves, was on holiday with his parents, Matt and Melissa Graves, um, and his two siblings. Um, it was a third day, and they were staying at the Grand Floridian Resort, which is located at the Magic Kingdom. So again, for anyone that doesn't know, is that when you, like, once you park your car and stuff, like, to get to the Magic Kingdom, it's not, like, directly there. You have to either go on a ferry across the water to get to the Magic Kingdom, or you go on the monorail. It takes you right. Ah, uh, yeah, we went on the monorail. Yeah. So if you go up, so if, for instance, if you go on the monorail, the chances are, like, mostly on your way back, on your way back from the park, if you're coming back to the car park, you would obviously go past a few hotels and the Grand, Grand Florid, the, can say the word, Floridian is one of those ones right. that you you would pass on there which oh, looks like a lovely hotel okay. I've never been to it I just passed it on the morning um, yeah, so that's so the family they were at the Seven Seas Lagoon which is obviously part of the, the resort <clears throat> and they were walking along and doing a bit of paddling Lane had bent down to gather some sand for making a sandcastle when a seven foot alligator <laughs> appeared um, and got Lane by his head and dragged him back into the water. Oh, my goodness. Eyewitnesses said that they saw Matt Graves, his dad, desperately trying to pry his son from the gator's grasp, but sadly his dad's e- efforts were in vain, oh. and the emergency services were obviously alerted, and a massive search went underway. Sadly, 16 hours later, Lane's body was recovered from the lagoon. His body was completely intact, so, oh. I mean, because of course you can imagine, I yeah. think it might have been torn apart a bit, but his body was intact. And it was later determined that he had died from a bite to his head and drowning. Yeah, I was just wondering alligator. if it was drowning, but yeah. were you saying there was. Yeah, by the alligator. Oh. Um, it was later reported um, that the family had been 10 feet beyond the clear no swimming signs, but there had been no signs alerting to the possibility of alligators. Right. So there was signs to say you know, swimming. Right. But there was no signs. But he wasn't swimming. He was getting oh, no, sand. They were, they were kind of paddling. I think they were. You know, right. They were. They were paddling in it. So they weren't like proper like swimming diving right. in it. But they were walking along. You know, he was walking along paddling his feet and. But you still wouldn't be expecting an alligator to jump at you, would you? Well, yeah, and I don't know if I'm completely right, but I'm sure that if there's alligators in most vicinities, there are signs to say that there's yeah, alligators. Well, there should so be. Yeah. Disney, you think would have mm. alligators. Um, so four alligators had been removed and killed in the search for Leighton. So they think it's likely that one of them had been the one responsible. They obviously couldn't determine exactly which one because yeah. his body had been intact. I mean, you know, normally if they killed oh. an alligator, you would have found something in, in its insides to, to indicate yeah. that the alligator. But That's awful. Mm-hmm. No, I just couldn't imagine it. Um, so after Lane's death, you know, Disney World, they did make changes to limit possible visitor contact with alligators on the property. So workers, um, you know, they built a, built a stone wall around the lagoon and they, and they put no fishing signs were installed around the waterfront areas, which I didn't really understand that. I thought they should have been putting alligator signs all, all on there and no, no, no fishing. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, mm. I mean, the fact that they built a wall, obviously... Well, at least they've done something. But yeah. yeah, I still think there should have been signs before and after. There should right. be alligator signs. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> especially if they've known to... Because I'm sure they, they've obviously known to have alligators there before. So mm. it's not like it's something that's just happened. But, I mean, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And sadly, the, the the tragedy, that had actually been the latest of three horrors to rock the state of Orlando in a matter of days. Um, so just as a sort of wee side note, I don't know if you re- would recall or know her, but pop star Christina Grimmie, she was on, I think she was on The Voice in America. Yeah, I've never watched The Voice um, in America. She, or she was murdered after a concert on the Friday night and 49 people were killed by a gunman at Pulse Gay Club in the early hours of Sunday. Yeah, I remember the, um, I remember the Pulse. Yeah, so that was all, that all happened in that sort of weekend, those three oh, Wow. Um, so that was pretty a pretty tough weekend for the people. Of uh, I didn't know about that pop star. Yeah, she, I'm sure but she... I knew about The Pulse because I, <clears throat> I'm, you know me, I'm a massive RuPaul. Mm. Fan and um one of the um one of the drag queens from RuPaul was actually performing that night, uh, but she got out. Right. Um, I, I don't know if she was actually performing or she I can't remember, but yeah, but that's how I heard because I followed her on yeah. social media and I was like, oh my god, and yeah. so I so, definitely yeah. remember that. So that like said, so those three things happened in, in, in a matter of days. So that's, that's awful. Pretty horrific weekend. 
uh, there. Because that was only, what was that, 2016, did you say? Uh, yeah, 2016, yeah. yeah. So not long ago. Not that long ago, to be fair. So I, I just, I just, that, and I remember seeing the story about the poor boy, you know, because I do follow a lot of things mm. to do with do Orlando, yeah. Disney, that sort mm-hmm. of thing. And I remember seeing it and I just thought, that's horrific. Oh. I mean, you know, it's just unimaginable. Two, two years old as well. I mean, that's just absolutely nothing. Um, so, on to the next one. On the 11th of February in 2004, a cast member was dressed up as Pluto in the Daily Parade. His name was Javier Cruz, and he was 38, a father of two, and had worked at Disney for eight years. Sadly, he was run over and killed by one of the floats just before they entered the public viewing area in Frontierland. Now, Frontierland's oh. where, like, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain is. I love Splash Mountain. <laughs> I, got, I got my daughter to go on it this year <laughs> for the first time. Um, but yeah, but I, obviously, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So they have the the parade ready behind the scenes, and then they'll yeah. obviously come out to the public. So mm-hmm. basically, it's happened before. It it just as well, came, but I mean, but, but yeah, horrific. Yeah. So sadly, he he was killed as well. Oh. So that's not so good. Um, Disney's not sounding so great. Well, I know because I mean, there are some. Although I I, I don't know. Cause I don't I don't know whether this is a hundred percent fact, but I did read it somewhere that apparently there is like you you know like when you obviously you something happens so you die and obviously they'll put on your death certificate like your place of death like where mm. you died yeah apparently nobody dies at Disney so even if you do die at Disney they don't put it on they don't the death. they don't basically pronounce you as dead until you're off the property so that why well, just because it looks bad. I don't know. But again, I don't know if it's hundred percent fact, but right. I did read it, so I can't I can't kind of say that is hundred percent true. But mm. I had to read that. Yeah, if, if you did die at Disney, you don't officially die at Disney. Well, maybe because they, you know, it's a magical place. Well, that's what I thought. Maybe they don't want it to be tarnished. It's a tarnished. That's a bad thing to say, but you know, they don't want it to be associated with death and stuff yeah. like that. I guess. So, yeah. I mean. Okay. Yeah, but, but I'm not a hundred percent sure whether it's a okay. fact, but that I certainly did read that. Um, so on the twelfth of. No, it's just October, you know. On the 12th of September in 1992, a man shot and killed himself at Epcot. Wow. Alan Ferris entered about 90 minutes after operating hours in search of his ex-girlfriend. He demanded to security guards that he saw her, but when the security guards refused, he pulled out a sort of shot, a 12-gauge tw- sort of shotgun. Um, Ferris fired three shots and the three guards fled. Um, one guard escaped, but two stopped after Ferris shot at them again. Ferris then took the guards hostage in the Journey to Imagination pavilion for about 10 minutes, but he eventually released the hostages and walked out with a gun pointed at himself, and moments later he shot himself in the head. Just because he came around his ex-girlfriend? Yeah, well, I'm glad he didn't think his ex-girlfriend, because I'm kind of wondering whether he would have shot her. Well, yeah, maybe. But then I, I just kind of, again, I mean, I know this is 1992, and obviously things might be a lot different, but I, I, I was almost baffled that this man managed to get into the park with the gun in the with first it, place, yeah. because... Now, when you go into the parks, obviously, you go through, like, bag checks. Like, they have, like, the security, you know, things that you walk through that would yeah. keep and stuff. You know, so they're very... Um, they never... I don't think... Because the, the first time we went was 1994. Mm-hmm. Was it 94 we went? No, I was eight. Or was I 94? It might have been 83 then. No, I think you were turning eight that year. Oh, right, so, so I think it was just before you right. turned eight. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, 94 we went. I don't remember having to go through... Like bag checks, like those. What do you, do you mean? Those things like you at the airport? Yeah, yeah. walk through the actual thing. You remember, the well, oh, I mean, my memory. We have a lot. We of all know Jill's memory. So. Oh, by the way, yes, I'm probably not good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I mean, that's what I was kind of like because I know now, like, I couldn't see that happening now that you would be able to get everything park with a shotgun. Everything's different now, though. You're mm-hmm. Like, you're not even allowed to take in the, um, you know, the selfie sticks that you get. Yeah. You're not even allowed to take them into the parks anymore. Why? I don't know if it's just like a... Because it could be used to hit somebody with. I don't, I don't I mean, <laughs> maybe something like that. I don't actually know the 100% reason. I mean, but yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. like that. So, you know, the, the thought of a, a weapon being allowed in, it just seems unthinkable. It does, but they must have not been as... What's the word? It must have been security conscious, you know? Yeah, what I mean? maybe. Uh, like I said, I mean, it was but that's of... why it's like the way it is now. Because mm-hmm. things like that happen, yeah. that's why... I mean, what, it was 20 years ago, just over 20 years ago now, that's since... But that's why we have all these security measures now because it's 30 years ago, sorry. It was 30 years ago. Right, okay, you're just really making us sound old now. Mm, like we were there in 1994. Sorry, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thankfully he uh, didn't get to his ex girlfriend because I hate to imagine what would have happened if he Yeah. Had. And well, he shot himself. 
I wonder if that's why why he was looking for her. Was he looking for her to kill her, or was he just looking for her like to just to talk to her and work things out or whatever, and just happen to have a gun? I don't know. I mean, I know I know, <laughs> I, know, I know in America you can mm. carry guns around with you. You can. That's, so I don't know whether that's, well, that's what I mean. Like, what's his intent? Is that why he was mm. looking for her? I wonder. Yeah. But then the fact that because he was refused to see her, he obviously got all worked up about it, shot at the guards, took mm. the hostage, and then shot himself. I mean, he sounds like he must have been. Who you does know. that at Disney? Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Who does that at Disney? How dare they? I know. Mm. It's supposed to be happy at Disney. Yeah, I know. Um, so on 11th of August 1977, a four year old boy called Joe Good from Dalton, Illinois, was visiting the Magic Kingdom when he climbed over a fence around Cinderella's castle where there was a five foot deep moat. He sadly fell in and died. Oh. Um, his mother sued Disney for negligence, claiming that the fence around the moat was too short. Um, the case was initially tossed out on the 8th of October 1981 when the judge ruled the mother failed in her duty um, to the child of oh, well, tender years. Like basically saying it was her fault that yeah, her kids was climbing. Right. So in December 1982, the 5th District Court of Appeals ruled that Good's mother could sue Walt Disney World, so she filed a suit of $4 million and jurors awarded her a total of $1.5 million after deciding that she was 50% at fault for the incident. <laughs> um, and anyone who has been at Disney World knows that... Um, oh, did I not write that down? Oh, sorry, I've just skipped. So let me go back to the incident. Um, what I was going to say was anyone that knows that has been to Magic Kingdom in recent years is that there's actually now a wall oh, is there? around the um, Cinderella's castle. So... You can't just fall over it. Like you mm. really have to be doing some. No, it's not like massive, but you'd certainly have to do a bit of climbing to get over and into the. the I moat. do think so. I I think it's a bit unfair to blame them. How old was the kid? Five, four, four. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a four year old. Like you know, oh. four year olds kind of run off and do. Exactly. And if it's and if it was that easy for the child. To mm-hmm. fall over, then it wasn't good enough. It wasn't no, big enough or whatever. Why they probably got a wall now to make it. I mean, I know, like so. they're probably saying, "Oh, they should have been had a hold of the kid's hand or whatever." But but everybody that's been at Disney but... knows how busy that place is. I mean, I don't know how busy it was back in nineteen seventy-seven. I mean, maybe not the business that you get in today's yeah. times, but I'm sure it would have been busy. So. I'm sure she just took her eye for a split second. That's what I mean. I mean, it happened in a split second. I so. just don't see how you could blame her no. for that. I think that's really just because it's it's all about money, isn't it? Like, well, they don't want to pay her the money, so she's yeah. half at fault, you know. And exactly. I just think, but to me, to me that. It, I, it was just park, an accident. Yeah. And, and I think, like, the park or any park has a duty of care to mm-hmm. the guests that of come course. through the doors, that pay the money, and they should have. You know, adequate safety measures in place for potential hazards. Exactly. Yeah. To me, a fence around what I know as Cinderella's Castle. I know things over the years have changed and developed a bit, so mm-hmm. things look a bit different. But you know, you you need to make sure that there's a lot of young children coming through there. So you know, it's and they are just running about and stuff and well, exactly. it's all easy excited. To, yeah, and it's easily to get distracted in that place. I mean, it's. I mean, what are you meant to do? Strap your child to you? Well, I think some people <laughs> probably do. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. Yeah, I think my mum mom used to strap. My mum threatened me because I used to get lost all the time in the shops. Oh, when we were in shop, and I used to just wander off. <laughs> she ended up losing me. You get a, a thing over the tannoy, like you know, the kid. Uh, um, the the um, I can't remember what they used to say, but they used to say, you know, they got your daughter here yeah, or whatever. Uh-huh. And mum actually used to threaten me, right? I'm gonna put a pair of reins on you, you know, those kid <laughs> reins. And I'm like, kind of. I don't know, maybe about seven at the time. <laughs> so, and I'm like, no, I'm not wearing those. She's like, well, you are. Yes. Trying to embarrass me. I bet, I bet. I know, I was so bad for that. Yes. So anyway, so anyway as I was, was going to say before I forgot about that, but like, anyone who has been at Disney World knows that crime-wise it is pretty non-existent. Um, mm-hmm. As, you know, what I was explaining before, you do have to pass through security and bag checks. So obviously I struggled to find, I mean there was loads of incidents that happened but I struggled to find any sort of more crime wise so I thought I would take you through some conspiracy theories instead I like conspiracy mm-hmm. it's not my episode and I can't talk no, no, you like conspiracy theories yeah I do so if anybody's heard of these ones or has any other, I mean don't get wrong there was a, a lot more that I probably could have wrote but you know I have, I have to admit I, I have listened to an episode about Disney um, um, Stephanie from Scottish and Scared I think her podcast is called she did um a Disney episode, maybe one or two actually, 
Um, and she had said there was there was there is like a lot like mm-hmm. she obviously just picked yeah picked a few out because there yeah. is a lot yeah basically, basically I just did pick a few out because yeah. I could have went on forever and ever and ever yeah. and I was like I can't do that <laughs> <laughs> I can only go on for so long so the first one that I came across was that someone got decapitated on Space Mountain oh wow no you've been oh, on so Space this Mountain is, so this is a conspiracy yeah this, this, these are all conspiracy right okay it's really... so, so yeah I've been on Space Mountain yeah, oh so my so god le- legend has it that a man stood up on the coaster and got his head cut off. Though this has actually proved to actually not be true. Right. A man did stand up on um, Disneyland in California's ride called the Matterhorn in 1964, hitting his head, which re- resulted in his death. Now, when I wrote the one about Space Mountain, now you've been on Space Mountain, please mm-hmm. tell me, at what point do you think you could have stood up on Space Mountain? Well, I was at, well. That's exactly what I was thinking when you said it. <laughs> like that's what I thought. I was like, I mean, obviously we know, we know it's just a theory and it's obviously not true. But well, because that's why I said to you. Oh, sorry, I've just kicked the thing again. God's sake. Right. Um. That's why I said when you first started when you said about I'm standing up. I'm like, is, is this this isn't this isn't true, is it? Yeah. Because well, I'll tell you something. Right. All I remember about Space Mountain is that I was at the front, mm-hmm. and then. I was I think, in the middle. Mum, no, I think. Well, was it you behind? Was it you behind me or mum? Dad was at the back. I think it was me behind you because I think mum was behind me. Right, so so you must have been behind me then. Uh-huh. And all I could hear all the way around was Laura screaming, "I hate this! I hate this! I want to get off! I'm scared! Mum, mum, help me!" <laughs> and that's all I heard all the way around was her screaming. Yeah. Then we got off the ride, and I was like, you know, me and mum kind of ran to Laura, like, are, are you okay, are you okay? She's like, yeah, that was great, can we go on again? <laughs> <laughs> and I got, all I can remember was my mum going, oh my God, like, oh, when you're sitting on a roller coaster, mm-hmm. and all you can hear is your child mm-hmm. screaming for you, yeah. and there's nothing you can do about it. She says, I felt absolutely awful. So uh-huh. basically, you spoiled it yeah. for mum. I will. Has she been on it again since? No, I don't think she has actually. She came to mum the two times that we went. No, she didn't. Um, you traumatised I didn't take my daughter on it purposely mm. because I knew from my experience yeah. when I was a kid, I was like, I just think that would absolutely traumatise her. Um, no, I don't. I think that was a good idea. But funnily enough, her. I took her on. She wanted, was desperate to go on this Everest ride in the yeah. Kingdom, so we actually did go on it, and she sat next to Justin on, on the first time we went round, and all I could hear was her screaming, screaming, screaming. <laughs> I was like, oh god, oh god, we got off. And I mean, there was like tears about to come, and I was like, "Oh my god, she hated it. She hated it." She's like, "Mom, can we go on again?" <laughs> and I went, "What?" I was like, "But you look like you hated it." She went, "No, no, I want to go on again." We went on it again, <laughs> loved it, and then she was like, "Can I go on a third time?" And I was like, "No." I was like, "I can't do a third time because like I had like the coaster head and I'm feeling a bit ill at this point." But I was like, "But that first time you were like nearly crying." Well, that was exactly what you were I like. So... She absolutely hated it, but no, she loved it. So I mean, she, obviously she would be alright in Space Mountain, but I just thought it was in the dark. Uh, you're not next to anybody, like you're like yeah. on your own. Yeah, so you've I got just, nobody to like hold on air. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. So I was like, no, nah, I just don't want to put her through that. I didn't want to put me through that because of the of me knowing what it was going to be like. So yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so I can see why that was proven yeah. to be true because mm. that just sounds ridiculous. Um. So second one is that the spirit of a little boy lurks in the haunted mansion in the Magic Kingdom. Oh. Cast members have said that they hear him giggling and mimicking the "Hurry back, <laughs> um, lady" after the ride it shuts down at night time. Oh. Another one is that uh, the characters on Disneyland, so Disneyland is the one in, in um, Cal- was it California, yeah. um, it's a small world, come to life even when yeah. unplugged. Cast members often swear that they see the dolls blink oh. or appear in different places than they were the day before. That's a creepy ride anyway. And it is, isn't it? I do not like that, that ride. That photo that I want to show you is in, in relevance to the oh, is it? rides. I can... I... I'm going to hate you for this because every time anybody speaks about that ride, I get that song in my head yeah, going, it's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you know what? It's one of the, I hate to say it, but it is one of the worst rides ever, <laughs> but yet everybody, for the nostalgic reasons, has to go on it. Like, we all have to do it, even I though it's like it. one of the worst rides ever. And I do think that that ride will probably be there forever. Ugh. It's even creepy though. though. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't particularly like it. Can you imagine them all coming to life when, mm-hmm. like, when it's switched off in that? I know. Um, so the next one is that Walt Disney, the man himself, uh-huh. the man that, that created Disney World, I've heard bad things yep, about him. still haunts his firehouse apartment on Main Street in Disneyland, California. An employee was cleaning the apartment shortly after he died, and the lamp in the window kept turning on itself, 
So now the park keeps it on as a tribute to him, and people swear that they occasionally see the curtains move on their own. I wonder if they'll start switching the light off now with the electricity <laughs> prices going on. Aye, <laughs> maybe. We don't need to get that one on, he's not here. <laughs> yeah, so apparently he mm. still wants his firehouse apartment. Mm, maybe he does. Mm. Next one is the ghost of a former employee haunts Disney World's Tower of Terror. Oh, uh, I did not want to go on that one. Mm. <laughs> no, we went I went on that twice this time round. Again, my daughter loved it. Yeah, I know she was telling me I'm going to go on it, and I was like, oh, I, no, I don't think you're going to like it. No, she, <laughs> she loved, loved it. it. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Um, a cast member had a heart attack while loading guests onto the ride and died in the building. Oh. His spirit apparently haunts the ride, um, and it's a. Uh, Platform D is, suppose, is supposedly like the spooky spot that current employees are, are scared of because obviously they have all the different um, elevators that they mm. go on. So Platform D is apparently where he haunts some mm. employees are scared. Well, it wasn't their fault that he had a heart attack. Well, exactly. I don't know why. Why is he haunting them? I don't know. Maybe he just liked working there so much. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, again, it's, it's a conspiracy theory, so who knows if it's true or not. Um... The next one is that the seance book in Disney World's Haunted Mansion was originally a real 14th century book of witchcraft. Ooh. Cast members had the hardest time keeping the book in the upright position. The table would often be turning over or the book would be somewhere else. So they finally had to replace it. Oh, did they? <laughs> Apparently so. I take it they had no problems with the books that they replaced it with then? Apparently not. <laughs> not, that I've, not that I've seen any. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another one is a ghost used to haunt the people mover in the Magic Kingdom. What? The mad the people mover. What's that? Um, it's basically like, no, you just sit in it and it, it's like just on a platform, it just moves you around and you get you actually get to go in into Space Mountain. So it takes you into Space Mountain and you can sort of see bits and then you, uh-huh. you go maybe into a, an, over a restaurant and stuff like that. It's just like a view of the park. All right. I suppose you could call it. You just see. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I know, yeah. It's, in, it's, in, it's where the Space Mountain um, place is. And like I say, you just... Yeah, and then it's funny because there's like, lots of videos about it on YouTube and stuff, but there was one time when they went through and Space Mountain ride must have been down, so the lights were all on, so you saw all the track as you went through. Mm-hmm. And like I say, you just go like, you know, you, you're, people are down there in a restaurant and you're you're basically on this people mover going above. Ah, above that sounds quite cool. Yeah, it's quite cool. Um, so yeah, so a ghost used to haunt the people mover in the Magic Kingdom of Florida, which um, would cause the ride to shut down all the time. A young kid died on the ride by jumping from car to car and his spirit is said to haunt the stockroom and he would open the emergency exit doors which were locked. Oh. Apparently. How can you do that if you're a ghost? I don't know. <laughs> mm. Well, how can you open locked doors? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. So this is the one that I want you to look at the photo of. All right, okay. The story. So apparently this is actually assumed to be untrue, but... In 1999, a family visiting Disneyland were on the It's a Small World ride yes. when suddenly the ride shut down. So crew members came along to help passengers out of the boats and along to the emergency exits. But the staff, they wouldn't tell, tell anyone like very much information about why the ride had shut down and what right. was going on. But there were ambulances and a police car parked in the main walkway. So at the time, a woman had been you know, taking photos, as you do on your holiday. She'd been taking photos. And then she was actually trying to use up her camera, um, because like it was back in those days when you only had so many photos that you could yeah. take on a thing before the film ran out. Yeah. And, developed. and you're like, oh, I've only got a couple of the Yeah, well, basically and... that's what it was. Yeah. They were, they were going to get those photos developed that day apart. Yeah. So she would just want to use up, you know, yeah. the ones that she had left. So she just carried on snapping a few photos. Um, so later they got them developed, and the, one of the photos showed someone hanging from the ceiling above, but many people think that it was just a prop. Right. So I've got a photo. So you've got a photo. So I know obviously listeners can't. Um, I can post it on um, social media. Is, but I mean, it is bit. You'll have to. I'll have to zoom in it because it's very, uh, very um thing. But obviously, there's a the ceiling. So I don't know if you can see. That there's something hanging there. Can you see it? You can zoom in a bit more, can't you? What's that? Yeah. Right. And that's not. That wasn't. There, well, no, like. That looks like a prop. Well, that's what everybody says it is. <laughs> but the conspiracy theory is that, that someone had hung themselves and that's why the ride had stopped and that's why the ambulances and the police were outside. But supposedly it was just a prop. Which, oh. to be fair, I think that probably is the case. <laughs> yeah, probably. But 
you know, it's the same same case of, you know, there was a divorce, remember, in the background you could s- supposedly see someone hanging themselves in that. No. Have you, not, have you not read that one? No. I listened to a podcast about the Wizard of Oz. Really? And, and all the seen, bad stuff. You've not seen the conspiracy theory about that? But in one of the scenes, I can't remember which scene it is, but you can actually see somebody hang themselves supposedly in the background. No. Oh, I'm going to show you that one. But I knew about the makeup, making the witch ill. Oh yeah, I knew that one, yeah. And that Dorothy got slapped. Mm. I'll show you the one about the penguin then. But yeah, so yeah, so again, it probably is just a prop, but... It's fun to have a wee conspiracy yeah, theory. Like a wee conspiracy. <laughs> well, as long as it wasn't actually somebody who actually did... Well, yeah, else. well... That's, mean, that's not fun, yeah. but you know. Unfortunately, we don't act... I mean, I don't 100% know the truth, but I mean, it's just it's deemed to be untrue. No. But, yeah. So, um... In Disneyland, California, there was a ride called America Sings, which opened on the 24th of June, 1974. It replaced the Carousel of Progress attraction, which had moved to the Magic Kingdom in Florida in 1973. Now, anybody that knows the Carousel of Progress ride... I've never heard of it. It is. Is it boring? Oh, my God, it's the worst one. <laughs> like, there's never a queue for it, put it that way. Like, okay. you can, you can, I, think, I think the most I've ever seen is queue is had like five minutes, and I've, I've walked straight on it. Because obviously we did it. I think it was like the first first time I went back as an adult, I think we wanted to do everything. So yeah. we obviously did all the, the ones that maybe I wouldn't have done like I wouldn't do now. I've never heard of it. Oh it's it's <laughs> anyway, it's not. It must have been there when I was there though, if it was nineteen in the nineteen seventies. Yeah, it probably would have been but yeah. I don't remember it anyway. Yeah. But both both rides basically kind of worked the same. So the building had an outer ring of six theatres connected by divider walls that revolved mechanically around about every four minutes around the six fixed stages in the centre of the building. So basically, you, you go into a theatre type place, you sit down, obviously there's a stage mm-hmm. with stuff on it, it does that bit, then it'll rotate, and then, yeah. and then there'll be another stage with bits on it, and it does that right. for the entire show. Right. Um. So... On the 8th of July 1974, nine days after the attraction opened, an 18-year-old hostess named Deborah Gale Stone was accidentally crushed to death at around 10.35, 10.40pm between two walls of the building. A narrow channel between a stationary wall and a rotating wall was open and Deborah either fell, she either stepped backwards or tried to jump from one stage to the other as the rotating wall began to move. It moved every two to four minutes, which was how long each act was. Right. Um, her death was pronounced at 11pm when the carousel was being reset for a new cycle. One of the audience members had heard Deborah's screams and notified park staff. Others thought it had just been part of the show. Yeah. Um, but by the time the audience member and staff got to her, Deborah had already died from her inju- injuries. Um, and Deborah's parents sued Disneyland for the death of her daughter, which resulted in a small settlement. Um, and following Deborah's death, the attraction it did close down, remaining closed while Disney installed safety lights and had the area uh, where the incident happened cleaned up. And later, the walls in the theatre were remodelled so that they would break away in case a similar accident happened. And the attraction actually reopened um, on the 11th of July, three days after the incident. So three days. Yeah, basically. Um, but yeah, there you go. But so Disney's not so magical after all. No, I know. And as I said, I mean, there was a lot more like instances of people, you know, that had heart attacks on rides or, you know, there has been instances yeah. at the thing, but there, I mean, there's nothing too sinister that I could find anyway. So <laughs> it clearly it's true. Disney is clearly the happiest place on earth because nothing apart from those people that you just talked about. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously there is some not so nice stuff, but generally speaking, mm-hmm. you don't find much in the way of crimes or... You know, things like that. There. Well, that's a good thing. Which is a good thing, obviously. Because, <laughs> you know, that's why you go there, for all the happiness and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but that was interesting, though. Thank you for that, for our wee bonus. Mm-hmm. There was a few little little stories there. That... Yeah. Are you quite happy that you got to do a bonus episode? Yes. Although, I do have another Disney-related episode coming up. Right, this okay. This episode. Listeners, shall we just... Back to the start of the episode where you said, I'm doing this episode to get over my holiday. No, like basically no more Disney. And then you're like, oh, I think I'm going to do a Disney one. Yeah, but this is to do with the Disney cruise. So All right. not the theme park. Okay. But I believe it will take up a full episode this time. So I've kept that. I didn't mention that one, so I thought I'd keep that. Yeah. A full episode yeah. for the next time round. So Disney's not quite over yet. Great. <laughs> well, thanks for listening. Yeah. To our bonus episode. Yeah, and we'll be back tomorrow. Yes, we will be back tomorrow. So see you later. Bye.
next time. Thanks. Bye.